performance is subject to economic recovery against risks such as COVID-19 disruptions, high cost of fuel, and political uncertainty. Uh, suffering out there, small scale people who are own less than a million, a million or two, and this would really help those people, some of whom are no longer existing. The committee recommends that the National Treasury sets up a fund by October 2021 that may be financed through a long-term bond for the payment of existing verified pending bills and court awards. The funds should be placed, should be in place, Honorable Speaker, by the 1st of October 2021. Specifically, Mr. Speaker, there should be an infrastructure board. There are so many pending bills in the Ministry of Infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, if that one, of course, is done, definitely we'll be able to offset some of the debts that we have. The adoption of the budget estimates by the Budget Committee is a precluded to the budget presentation of the 3.66 trillion shillings budget on Thursday afternoon by the National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Okur Yetani. Regina Manyara reporting for Channel One Business. Let's now focus on health matters where Amnesty International Kenya and the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentist Union, KMPDU, won the government to allocate at least 1% of the national budget for procurement of COVID-19 vaccines for the entire adult population. This as the country recorded 589 new coronavirus infections from a sample size of 4,995 tested in the last 24 hours, bringing the positivity rate to 11.8%. Hours before National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Okuri Atani presents the national budget for the financial year 2021-2022, eight lobby groups led by Amnesty International Kenya have raised concerns that the proposed budget has failed to specify any significant allocation for the purchase of the COVID-19 vaccines. We are deeply worried that despite the shocks to all aspects of life and livelihoods due to COVID-19, the national budget health care, including what is spent at the county level, is still at 8%, not 15%, and is way below the requirements of the Abuja Declaration 20 years down the line. According to the Lombi groups, the estimated total cost of vaccinating the entire adult population in the country is 35 billion shillings, which represents only 1% of the projected national budget for the financial year 2021-2022. For the last few months, we've been depending on the COVID that has been donated. For example, the last 350,000 doses that came were from Denmark. The other 1,200, uh, 120,000 doses that came, one of some are from Congo and some are from South Sudan. So we actually need the country or the government also to uh, budget and purchase the vaccine for its population. In addition, the groups want the government to increase the health sector allocation to 15% and allocate funds to subsidize cost of COVID-19 testing and treatment. It's important that we increase both health allocation to ensure that health workers remain adequately resourced to support the people through the public health care system. The support should include necessary equipment, protective gear, and research for all health workers. The concerns coming as the country recorded 589 positive cases of COVID-19 from a sample size of 4,995 tested in the last 24 hours. This bringing the positivity rate to 11.8%. According to the Ministry of Health, 19 people have succumbed to the disease to bring total fatalities in the country to 3,345. Total confirmed cases are 173,661, bringing the cumulative tests to 1,845,884. In terms of distribution, Kisumu County is leading with 100 cases, Nairobi 91, Bungoma 60, Oma Bay 54, Siaya 49, Wasingishu 37, and Busia 32 cases. We are working closely with the Kisumu County COVID-19 Agency Committee to ensure that the measures are put in place to contain further spread of the virus. 312 patients have recovered from the disease, 128 from various health facilities countrywide, 
while 184 from the home-based and isolation care program. With the number of recoveries increasing in the recent weeks, and total recovery is now standing at 118,933. The Council of Governors says county governments will take drastic actions to ensure compliance of COVID-19 prevention guidelines. The county government will continue to play their critical role as far as liquor licensing is concerned and also strict enforcement of the guidelines. In view of this, County government will take drastic measures, including suspension of licenses, to unscrupulous operators. Ben Chumba, reporting for Channel One News. And still on health, the government and development partners have... I'll take that again. On health, the government and development partners have pledged to invest highly in mental health sector and to fill the gaps that have derailed access to quality treatment. Speaking during the launch of the Kenya Medical Health Action Plan 2021-2025, Health CAS Dr. Masimo Wangangi said mental health care has been neglected for years. The Kenya Med Mental Health Action Plan 2021-2025 is a five-year journey towards attainment of the highest standards of mental health across the country. Statistics by the Ministry of Health have revealed that 11% of individuals attending general medical facilities in the country have symptoms of mental illness, mostly depression and anxiety. 11 people who are working on their farms uh, approximately will have a mental health need but will not know about it. The revelation coming in the backdrop of reports by the Mental Health Policy Task Force that shows a glaring gaps in the country's mental health systems. And so right now with our mental health action plan, we do plan to invest in these spaces to ensure that there's more resources for mental health services. And so to achieve these objectives, the county governments are expected to play a critical role as most health services and programs remain devolved functions. Speaking during the launch of the Kenya Mental Health Action Plan 2021-2025, Health CAS Dr. Massimo Ngangi says the government's focus has now turned to the mental health sector, which has seen its fair share of neglect. For a long time, particularly in the health sector in this country, we've had different counties, different departments of health lacking annual mental health plans. Going forward, through the support of our partners, through the commitment of government, counties shall actually put pen to paper and shall have their annual mental health plans. In his part, WHO County Representative Dr. Rudy Eggers expressed commitment in supporting the Kenya Mental Health Action Plan 2021-2025 activities towards uplifting mental health. Ladies and gentlemen, we must prioritize the need for integrated mental health care across all levels of health care, including community care, primary care, non-specialist hospitals, and then, of course, the specialist services, the psychiatric hospitals. The Kenya Mental Health Action Plan 2021-2025 has been a five-year journey towards attainment of the highest standards of mental health. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha has ordered all schools to, to reintroduce physical education Professor Magoha at the same time called on national and county governments, development partners, faith-based organizations, civil society organizations, and other stakeholders to support the implementation of the physical education and sport policy launched on Wednesday at the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development in Nairobi. Ruth Wamboy reports. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha has officially launched the physical education and sports policy ahead of grade 5 CBC rollout in July. The government's long-term quest to encourage physical fitness and tap sports talent is on course to being actualized. <laughs> this follows the rolling out of a framework to guide the arts and sports science policy in basic education learning in the country. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha says the aim of the policy is to ensure schools offer learners an opportunity to engage in all sports and explore hidden potential. Policy, ladies and gentlemen, in concert with all stakeholders, will ensure no learner is left behind as we seek to pass the benefits of physical education and sport to learners, including those with disabilities. 
Teacher Service Commission say they have completed training teachers and they are ready for the implementation of the policy. Uh, our teachers are now ready to roll out grade 5 and we are very happy that uh, this training went out successfully and we are very happy to report that all the schools in the Republic of Kenya are now ready to roll out grade 5. This is as Professor Magoha appeals for technical assistance from Germany in improving the conceptualization of assessments. In Germany, there are very key elaborate systems and structures for assessment of arts and sports. And I've been involved in, in this even at university level. I visited many German universities when I was a head, a, a, a head teacher at the university. At the same time, the cabinet secretary has also sent a strong warning to land grabbers who have encroached on school playgrounds. If somebody has encroached, let us go and take it. Because you see, they didn't use the law to take it. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Or you do it on behalf of the children and make sure that there's a field for our children to play for posterity. The objectives of the policy include providing learners with knowledge, skills, values and positive attitudes, enhancing access, equity and inclusion of learners through physical education and sport, strengthening governance, accountability and integrity. Magoa has called for unwavering support from both state and non-state actors for the policy implementation to be a success. Reporting for Channel One News from Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development here in Nairobi, I'm Ruth Wamboy. To the corridors of justice now where the court has allowed an application to have three witnesses in the inquest involving the death of Tekra Mungai, the daughter of Keroshe Brewery's boss Tabitha Karanja, to testify in camera. Milimani Principal Magistrate Zainab Abdul ruled that the application by prosecution was merited on security grounds. The prosecution had sought to have the case heard behind closed door, citing the security of the three witnesses from Lamu. Tekra died on May the 2nd last year at the Nairobi Hospital after she was al after she allegedly rather fell down the stairs at a house in Lamu. Tekra's boyfriend, Omar Lari, was arrested for the incidents, but Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions dropped the murder case against him in July and ordered for an inquest into her death. 11 out of the 44 witnesses lined up to testify have given their testimonies. There is need to safeguard the identity of the witnesses who are present from Lamu. Their concerns are merited. Therefore, the proceedings for today shall be held in camera. Those are the orders of the court. At about 17 minutes past the hour, we take our first breather, but don't go too far. When we come back, we'll be telling you how Kenyans are surviving a bait at the COVID-19 pandemic. A bait also in small scale. Don't go too far. as an investment that provides for future savings paid upon maturity. Now you know. IRA. Promoting insurance. Protecting the insured. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Kujiunga na QuickBid ni raisi. Enda kwenye M-Pesa, bonyeza Paybill, kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account, weka kodi bidha unayotaka na bidi yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano, TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 22 kama idadi yako. Weka bidi yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke. Kumbuka, bidi ya chini zaidi ya kipeke, ndiyo ununua. QuickBid, bidha abora kwa bei ya chini. Kupata skiza tune hii, sala ya imani... Na matumaini, dial star 811, star 815 hash. Sala ya imani. Mungu wangu na sadiki maneno yote linalo sadiki na linalo fundisha kanisa katoliki la Roma. Kwani ndiwe uliofundisha hayo, wala haudanganyiki, wala haudanganyi.
Amina. Sala ya matumaini. Ili kupata sikiza tin hiyo ya sala ya imani na matumaini, dial star 811 star 815 hash. Star 811 star 815 hash. The greatest rally in the world is back in Kenya. Catch all the action of WRC Safari Rally live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 from 24th to 27th June. See the world's best drivers navigate their machines on Kenya's rough terrain at breakneck speeds. Experience the thrills, adrenaline, drama and excitement as man and machine do battle. Don't miss out. WRC Safari Rally, live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. Your true sports partner. Next on. Maria Mwishu, you know Nancy Likoen? I know they'll be coming for me soon. Si chukue tega moja uwede South Africa kwa jifishage uko. I have built too much here in Kenya to just walk away. Kusikiza kinyikita ni palikuwa na apiena na yaliku wapa njeni kasindo. Na yaliku wapa njeni kasindo. Why you need to go to the school? Why you need to go to the school? Why you to go to the school? Why you need 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 to go to the school? Why you Welcome back and thanks for keeping it Channel One. Now, the practice of buying foods from the street has become the main source of income for most street vendors in the country who now depend on the business to put food on the tables and pay for other bills such as school fees for their children. We bring you the story of a 26-year-old father of one who is among youths in the country who have refused to be part of unemployment statistics by creating their own jobs though on a small scale. There is no doubt that street food vending has become popular and integral part of our culture. Thousands of Kenyans like 26-year-old James Muli from Embu County, street food vending is a source of employment. Muli, who operated a border border business in Embu Town, says he ventured into oaking eggs and sausages after losing nearly 10 of his friends through road accidents. Kitambo ni kwa na vanya border. Ni kwa na border vanya me malika man business tangu ni kaja na border. Kaja na border sasa uwe akani pea andi faisha. Akani abe ikasi ni kosa wacha ni join. The father of one who has operated the business for close to five years now says he has no regrets because at least he is assured of a daily income. Because of his simple and effective marketing strategy that includes maintaining high levels of hygiene in his area of operation, Muli says his customer base has been growing significantly. Kuingia hapa mchana ni irigo. Wanasemanga tunavunga stenji. Sasa tunaruhusiwa kuingia saa 11 magari kipungua stenji. Hiyo ndio tunakuanga tumeruhusiwa. Ukiingia before saa 11 wangu unakamatwa unapeleka huko juu. Ben Chumba reporting for Channel 1 News. Residents of Mwangaza area in the outskirts of Isiolo town are living in fear after a homestead was raided and two people left nursing gunshot wounds. According to residents, the attacker who also made away with 87 goats, Isiolo County Commissioner Haman Shambi says investigations are underway to prosecute the culprits. According to the residents, the gunmen descended on Peter Muriungi's homestead at around 11.30 p.m. on Tuesday. Isiolo County Commissioner Haman Shambi called on members of public to always cooperate with security officers by volunteering information in good time. Mambo salama ukiona sema, ukisikia sema, ukishuku sema, afadhali tuende, tuangalie tukose hakuna kuliko unyamaze mambo ya haribike tuanze kulia. 
Meanwhile, Kigomo Law Court has issued a warrant of arrest against Muranga South DCIO David Cheruyot for disregarding two court orders and confiscating the phones of two Nigerian nationals charged with trafficking narcotic drugs and being in Kenya unlawfully. We do call for respect of court orders, for the treatment of all people, international, national, or otherwise, fairly and with parity, leaders in positions such as the DCIO and other public officials should be striving to treat people with the, treat people with equality, fairness, social justice. Bagadi Hostel and Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hostel have received one million shillings donation from a betting farm. The funds will be used to purchase medical oxygen tanks and assorted medical equipment for the two hostel which serve as one of the COVID-19 centers in the country. If you are able to make an impact and a change for one life, I think you have done a good job. You can go back home and, and, and know that you made an impact. Certainly this is something that's going to make change for a much uh, bigger number. As a level six referral hospital, many of the private hospitals and many of the public hospitals refer their patients to us. So we, oxygen is a very crucial part of our, of our, um, of our need. And uh, Becking recognizes that. And for giving us 500,000 watt of uh, oxygen and consumables, we really appreciate that. And a COVID-19 crusader who is on a sensitization campaign to inform youth across counties on the pandemic that has caused disruption worldwide has arrived in Kisi County. Ungana na county commissioner wa county wetu huko Marsabit na amazisha vijana kutoka katika madawa hizi za ya, ya madawa za kulevia na pia saa hii nimejitolea kuhamasisha wa Kenya kwa jumla ili tuweze kupita janga hili la corona. Newly elected member of parliament for Juja George Koimburi has vowed to immediately start implementation of stall development projects speaking during celebrations held after you were sworn in. Koimburi said he will work with rivals to better the constituency. In business, Kenyans want the 2021-2022 budget to prioritize socio-economic sectors in a bid to cushion them from the current tough economic challenges. Speaking to KBC Channel One, those in various parts of the country said that allocation of funds to social programs will shield them from unemployment, high cost of goods and services, and the high cost of living. Their remarks comes hours before National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Ukul Yatani presents the 3.66 trillion shillings budget in the National Assembly. Kenyans have realized that infrastructure has always gotten the lion's share of the budget. But how else can you fund such huge industries besides taxes, PPPs, or borrowing? Here are opinions of various Kenyans who feel that this budget should be more mindful of their pockets. Hey, no, 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 should be like a sana infrastructure, ni, 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 ni. <laughs> But to for those, these are my projects we are going But to the people who are going to be able to do it, we are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. Kitu ya kwanza lazima tu, tuwekwa into considerations kama wananchi eh na kitu yote kabila ipitisho ama yamuliwe eh sisi wananchi tunafaa tuongee wapeleke bunge bunge watutetee iko approved kusema ukweli tunapitia shida sana kwanza tangu hii mambo ya kuwa port imetolewa mambo mengi yameenda Nairobi biashara haiendi kabisa hivi hata tunasikia wanataka kutuongezea guest tena license kila kitu imeenda juu 
tulikuwa tunaomba hii budget ipunguzie mwananchi wa kawaida naye aweze kusikia vizuri serikali saidie watu wa agriculture kwa sababu wanaumia na wanasol sana so at least hapo ndio wana depend wanapata chakula nini nini and my views about the budget is first who are the target group those targeted by the budget are the poor and the marginalized and we are from covid meaning that uh, most people have not been trading or they have not uh, been trading to the full capacity tunauliza je ni siku gani budget itasomwa tusikie tumeangushiwa vitu badala ya kuwa tunapandishiwa vitu kila wakati the 2021 2022 3.6 trillion shillings kenyan budget has been received with mixed reactions here on the streets with Kenyans saying they need the shillings to go directly to their pockets rather than major infrastructure projects alan auko reporting for channel on business in nairobi Thanks, Alan, for that. Moving on, the government is seeking more private partnerships to increase ICT skills set among students in higher learning institutions. Speaking during the unveiling of the Huawei Training Center, ICT Principal Secretary Dr. Jerome Ochiang said the PPP model will ensure Kenya has a skilled ICT labor force that can help in repairing and upgrading the country's ICT infrastructure. The Huawei Training Center has been officially opened and will admit 1,200 trainees each year. Huawei says it is seeking to collaborate with institutions of higher learning across the country to equip learners with ICT skills. In the future, Huawei will keep on working with Kenya government and education institutions tirelessly to establish an open, healthy, and sustainable ICT talent ecosystems in Kenya. Dr. Ocheng says the government is keen on stealing more public-private partnership to strengthen the ICT sector through trainings to create a skilled workforce that can support and sustain a digital economy. So far we have more than 7,000 kilometers of fiber through the national optical fiber backbone infrastructure that the ministry partnered with Huawei, and that particular fiber needs to be maintained. Integrating artificial intelligence training in the higher education curriculum has been back to make Kenya a regional ICT hub. So our objective is to actually as a country become the regional hub for skilling. And uh, like I challenged uh, my colleague from the university that let's focus on how to uh, train our people for the next generation of uh, services that we require. We need to invest in talent locally and treat talent as the industry's most important resource. Players in the ICT sector are calling for the operationalization of the Data Protection Act to make Kenya more attractive to investors. Benson Ropa reporting for Channel One Business. The Geothermal Development Company has struck a huge well estimated to yield about 17 megawatts equivalent of steam in the Baringo Silare project. GDC Managing Director Engineer Jared Otieno says the big well is a huge pointer of the huge resource in the region. The Baringo Silali Geothermal Development Project covers three prospect areas, namely Parker, Korosi, and Silali. GDC has been undertaking exploration drilling at the Parker and Korosi prospects. So far, five geothermal wells in the Baringo Silali region have been drilled successfully. The latest is a well estimated to yield about 17 megawatts equivalent of steam, which GDC Managing Director Engineer Jared Otieno says is a pointer of the huge resource in the region. They distract one of the uh, biggest or the most prominent uh, geothermal well in Paka. So they should look to it that in the, in the foreseeable future, we should be able now to see uh, reliable power and a cost uh, effective uh, power so that they can be able then to see an opportunity also for direct use. This area can be able to be changed so that we can be able to start seeing uh, uh, what we call industrial parks but we can call them resource or heat parks within this area. 
He credited the success of the project to the resilience and commitment of his field staff, COVID-19 notwithstanding. I think this is a period that the team has been able to bring on board about three wells within that span of the COVID pandemic, something that we've not done in a while. Now, the resilience has been brought about by the teams themselves being able to ensure that whilst they are within the prospect area, they observe the protocols. The KFW German Development Bank is financing the initial phase of the Baringo Silali block that is estimated to have a potential of 3,000 megawatts at a cost of 80 million euros. A social component was actually integrated within the project itself. Uh, within the project, uh, we have about 20 watering points, uh, and these are purified water that uh, uh, is fit for human consumption. So the community can be able to come to those watering points and be able to get themselves uh, drinking water. Also, we have uh, within the same area, we've identified 40 livestock watering points which then the community is able to bring their livestock at, at different times to be able to, to uh, give them water. As part of its CSR program, GDC has integrated its water system to communities for domestic and cattle use that runs up to 160 kilometers supplying purified water. The National Treasury has proposed 135.2 billion shillings towards the Big Four agenda in the 2021-2022 financial year. The allocation is 7 billion shillings higher than the 128.3 billion shillings allocated to the projects in the current financial year. The chair of the Budgets and Appropriations Committee, Kanini Kega, says the full benefits of the Big Four agenda project would be realized after the year 2022. In 2017, President Uhuru Kenyatta unveiled the Big Four plan for the next four years. The Big Four agenda is anchored on the pillars of food security, manufacturing, universal health coverage and affordable housing. With barely 15 months to the end of President Uhuru Kenyatta two terms, there are concerns whether his government will achieve the intended milestones. In the 2021-2022 budget, National Treasury has proposed 135.2 billion shillings towards the Big Four agenda. The amount is a slight drop if compared with the 450.9 billion shillings allocated to drivers and enablers of the development plan in 2019-2020 financial year. But the chair of the Budget and Appropriation Committee, Kanini Kega, says Kenyans would soon start feeling the full benefit of the Big Four agenda. This being the final year of implement, implementing of the Big Four agenda, the, uh, the current administration, the committee is concerned that the full benefit of the Big Four agenda may not be realized by 2022. It is therefore important for the strategies that will be implemented beyond 2022, notably the fourth medium term plan. In the next financial year, the National Treasury has proposed to maintain the allocation to the manufacturing pillar at 18.4 billion shillings, for which the drivers would take up 5.1 billion shillings. Those in the manufacturing sector say the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted performance. The president had pledged affordable health care to all Kenyans and 500,000 affordable housing units by next year. In 2019, the government delivered the first round of 228 low and affordable housing units to Kenyans. Owing to COVID-19, the universal health coverage budget has been reduced by 2.3 billion shillings. In the final estimates tabled Wednesday in the National Assembly, the National Treasury has proposed 47.7 billion shillings towards UHC from the current 50 billion shillings. On affordable housing, about 14.8 billion shillings has been proposed, with enablers taking 13.2 billion shillings of the budget. In the budget, the National Treasury CS is expected to balance between post-COVID economic recovery and implementation of President Uhuru Kenyatta's Big Four agenda. 
budget, the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination has been lauded as a major step towards the resumption of activities in the travel and hospitality industry, which has borne the brand of disruptions caused by the pandemic. Ahead of the presentation of the 3.66 trillion shillings budget, PKF CEO Alpesh Vanda said some of the coronavirus containment measures such as the night curfew are hurting the hospitality industry and other sectors. For the year ending June 30th, government has undertaken several initiatives towards tourism recovery, among them 500 million shillings for marketing, while 2 billion shillings was set aside to support renovation of facilities and the restructuring of business operations. 1 billion shilling stimulus package was earmarked for engaging 5,500 community scouts under the Kenya Wildlife Service and another 1 billion shillings to support 160 community conservancies. However, one year on, the biting effect of COVID-19 is still reverberating in the hospitality value chain. Wakatuli okwanza mwakajanu tisikuwa kumba serikali yukona mpango wa economic stimulus package ya maplan kwa ajili ya mashirika ambayo ya nafanya kazi ya utali. Sisi utukio wadau katika mamba utali, hatukuwa na chuchotu kutukana na ile economic stimulus plan ya serikali. Secondly, we have really struggled as an industry. Quite a few members of staff had to lose their jobs and so on and so forth. Data from the Kenya Private Sector Alliance indicates that at least 3.1 million jobs in travel and tourism were affected in the year 2020 as hotels, bars and restaurants, tour operators, airlines, travel agents and their suppliers and support services recorded low business. Sasa tuna expect uh, unajua maisha imekua ningumu sana kwa sikila kitu ikoju alafu tumetoka uh, wakati wa COVID mavuta bei yake ilikuwa imeenda juu na spare parts za gari zilikuwa zinaenda juu alafu magari mingi zetu ni za loan kwa hivyo ile ile tuna expect lakini sasa tulalamiki sana ni tu Mombasa cause it would depend on tourism tuna expect tu serikali iendelee kufanya juu chini kupata tourist alafu maneno mengine kama ya mavuta waangalie kwa sababu hiyo bei ya mafuta ikienda juu sana pia bei zetu zitaenda juu alafu unaona hiyo itakuwa mbaya sana kwa customers for taxi drivers curio businesses among the several indirect dependents of the hospitality industry anxiety is rife with the looming threat of a fourth wave of the covid-19 pandemic tuweke katika budget ile uh, katika mipangilio economic stimulus waangalie watuweke watuweke lakini wasisemi kwamba atakuja kutukopesha because kama sasa ukitukopesha mkopo tutatoa pesa kulipo ile mkopo hakuna utalii completely kabisa the expectation is that the proposed budget will make provisions for industry players to remain afloat this is a good thing all the staff are vaccinated we are telling the marketplace that we are a safe place to go and if people come they'll be safe however for us to be even safer as many people as possible in the country uh, should also be vaccinated so we pray that uh, the rollout of the vaccination will go on and uh, help many people. However, for accounting expert Alpesh Vada, the ongoing vaccination exercise is key towards the resumption of activities in the hospitality industry. We are roughly about 7 billion in the entire world. So how are we going to get 7 billion people vaccinated in a short span of time? So we can't go into a full lockdown, open and uh, close and reopen. So I think we just have to learn how to live with COVID. He further proposed government to involve the private sector in COVID-19 vaccine sourcing to hasten the intervention. All eyes are focused on Ukuriyatani's briefcase and its contents for the hospitality industry. Regina Manyara, focus on the 2021-2022 budget. Elsewhere, since the first case of the COVID-19 was reported in the country early last year, the agriculture sector has been facing a myriad of challenges. Farmers had to contend with the loss of ready markets for their produce as containment measures took a toll on the sector's value chain. In the draft 3 trillion shillings budget 2021-2022, the National Treasury has proposed to allocate 62 billion shillings to the agriculture sector. 
The 2021-2022 budget estimate tabled in the National Assembly, National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Okuri Atani proposes to allocate agriculture 62.6 billion shillings. Of the amount, 46 billion shillings has been allocated to crop development, with the fisheries department getting 10 billion shillings and livestock farming getting the least amount at 6.6 .6 billion shillings. The total agriculture proposed allocation has been met with criticism from the National Assembly Committee on Agriculture that feels the sum is not sufficient to revive a sector that is still struggling from the negative effects of COVID-19. It is grossly underfunded. And when I say grossly underfunded, it is underfunded to the tune of 25.8 billion, which I think something needs to be done because agriculture is an area that should really be looked into. The Budget and Appropriation Committee report says the agriculture sector is still grappling with the historical pending bills. The State Department of Livestock has a pending bill of slightly over 4 billion shillings that has seen it scaled down on some key projects with some taking long to complete. The report further states that the State Department for Crop Development implementation of the e-voucher system is taking long. It further notes that the Nutrition Sustainization Program and the National Foods Reserve has a funding gap of 128 million shillings and 200 million shillings respectively. The crop department has also a fertilizer pending bill worth 8 billion shillings. In the Department of Livestock, for example, uh, they have a current pending bill of about <coughs> 4.2 billion. And that one is, goes to Halal, Meat Products, and also uh, <coughs> an associate architects limited, which they, they have a, a pending bill of 25.9 million. In the crop sector, we have a burning bill to the tune of 10 billion. The Agriculture and Food Authority says there's need for more allocations in the agriculture sector to enforce rules and regulations that will bring sanity in the sector that has been blighted by middlemen and unscrupulous traders who fleece farmers. Bring more money, I do, I restore order in the agricultural center, I, re, I mean sector. I restore discipline uh, to ensure that uh, impunity is is no longer in the agricultural sector because the problem is the issue of brokers, middlemen. We have to deal with them probably. Some of the subsectors that are targeted for policy change include tea, coffee, sugar, and potato value chains. Benson Drew by reporting for Channel One Business. Kisi, Changam Kenny, and let's meet at Gusi Stadium from Wednesday 9th June to Friday 11th June for the IRA Open Day. The Insurance Regulatory Authority is bringing the insurance message right to your doorstep in partnership with the County Government of Kisi. Join us to learn more about insurance. IRA officers will be on site to address your needs, queries, and complaints. Various companies will also be present to showcase their products and address any concerns you may have. Policyholders, beneficiaries, and members Members of the public are all invited to attend. Entry is absolutely free. All Ministry of Health and COVID-19 protocols and guidelines will be adhered to. IRA, promoting insurance, protecting the insured. The greatest rally in the world is back in Kenya. Catch all the action of WRC Safari Rally live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 from 24th to 27th June. See the world's best drivers navigate their machines on Kenya's rough terrain at breakneck speeds. Experience the thrills, adrenaline, drama and excitement as man and machine do battle. Don't miss out. WRC Safari Rally, live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. Your true sports partner. Time to play and we begin with athletics where 18 year old Jonathan Kipko Edge timed 8 minutes and 6 seconds in the 3000 meter race and emerged victorious as Athletics Kenya conducted the Nairobi branch pre-trials for the World Under 20 Championships today at the Nyayo National Stadium. Brother. 
Elsewhere, Team Kenya athletes currently in Babu Camps at the Kasurani Stadium are the first batch of athletes to receive the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine in the second phase of the rollout campaign by the Ministry of Sport and the Ministry of Health. Team Kenya athletes currently in Babu Camps at the Kasarani Stadium are the first batch of athletes to receive the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine in the second phase of the rollout campaign by the Ministry of Sports and the Ministry of Health. Sports Cabinet Secretary Ambassador Mina Mohamed was at hand to witness the exercise when she paid a visit to the team at Kasarani. Olympics Kenya is working with the government in Team Kenya preparations. The bubble camp has been set up at Kasrani where currently the Kenya Rugby Sevens men team Shuja, the Rugby Sevens women's team Lionesses, volleyball team Malchia Strikers, boxers and Taekwondo athletes are camping. Sports, uh, yeah, you know, any sport for that matter without spectators uh, is always a challenge. And so, so that's a big, uh, you know, a big uh, difference uh, that you'll see. Um, it's also um, led to a cancellation of qualifiers, uh, delay and postponement of qualifiers. You know, so, so there have been a lot of changes, um, and, but justifiably so because, as I said before, we have never been uh, where we are today as a world community. And so we're adapting to a new situation. We want to make it. And so, yeah, Jonathan Kipkowicz timed 8 minutes 6 seconds in the 3,000 meters race and emerged victorious as Athletics Kenya conducted the Nairobi branch pre trials for the World Under 20 Championship at Nyayo National Stadium. He was followed by Dennis Kipkurui, who timed 8 minutes 10. 5 seconds. Rafael Depash settled for the third position in 8 minutes 25.1 seconds. The women's race was won by Sharon Chepkeme who clocked 10 minutes 27.5 seconds, while Jolestine Biwat and Florence Chekilu finished in the second and third positions respectively. Frederick Moki for Channel 1 Sports. James Nyang, one of the four refugees in Kenya named in the IOC Tokyo 2020 refugee team, will be competing in his final Olympics next month in Tokyo. Nyang, who also competed in the Rio Olympics five years ago, has decided to retire from international competitions after the Tokyo Games postponed from last year due to the coronavirus pandemic. Having competed in several international competitions, including the Rio Olympics in Brazil in 2016 and the 2019 World Relays in Yokohama, Japan, James Nyang, one of the refugees at the Tekla Lorupe Foundation named by the IOC in the refugee team for this year's Olympic Games, has decided to untie his lessons after the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. No, no, no. I, I, I don't think uh, because uh, we have, we have a, a lot of athletes who are upcoming and they are, they are doing very well uh, even those who who make it to Olympic not that they are the best you know so many of us uh, all the athletes they are good uh, and uh, it's just a matter of time when your chance uh, came you, you you get it so I pray also one day they, they will get their chances and, uh, and and go to Olympic and I will really appreciate it so not only me to go to Olympic every day. Nyang is on a mission to give his best performance in Tokyo as he plans to retire and pave way for other young refugees who desire a chance to compete in international competitions. Whether he wins a medal or not, Nyang says he will quit and venture into coaching so as to give back what he has learned over the years as a motivation to other refugees who may have lost hope. Going to Olympic, it doesn't... It doesn't change anything, you know. So they should know that uh, they have to focus ahead. That is the most important. So they should not say that if you, you did not make the team, that uh, that is the end of, of, of everything. No. They, they should know that uh, there is life after, after that, you know. Meanwhile, for the second year running, the Lewa Marathon will be held virtually with organizers encouraging runners everywhere to join the challenge in support of Kenyan communities and wildlife. Runners can participate in the 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers, 21 kilometers and 42 kilometer categories. I think and I feel it's important to support the uh, Lewa virtual marathon every year. reason I'm born is that uh, it's one way of uplifting the rangers, one way of conserving them more, one way of actually uh, 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 getting funds to level conservancy. 
to, because their work is to empower the communities through education, empower women in businesses, uh, actually take care of the whole community. So I am here actually to, to make sure that uh, the, the, the uh, Lewa has been giving a hand. The Lewa Marathon has raised millions of shillings to fund wildlife conservation and community development in Kenya over the last 21 years. The funds raised have been used in various initiatives and projects across Kenya, from recovering Kenya's black rhino population from the brink of extinction, protecting the world's critically endangered gravy zebra, providing health care, water and improved infrastructure for communities, to supporting Lewa's education programs. Fifteen pupils from three different primary schools will benefit from a five-year table tennis scholarship courtesy of the Kenyan Federation. This was unveiled today during the launch of a partnership between Kenya Table Tennis Federation and Visa Oshawa Primary School as the Kenyan Federation officially unveiled the scholarship project for the first time in history. Five pupils from Vista Oshawa Primary School, five from St. Joseph's and St. Monica Kitane, will be selected to benefit from a five years scholarship by Kenya Table Tennis Federation. According to Kenya Table Tennis Federation President, five pupils from Visa Oshawa Primary School, five from St. Joseph's and St. Monica Kitane, will be selected to benefit from a five years scholarship by Kenya Table Tennis Federation. According to Kenya Table Tennis Federation President Andrew Modibo, the project is geared towards nurturing talent from a tender age and promoting the sport from grassroots levels. So I believe even for the schools that are ready to be there, we'll encourage them to come in touch for them to contact us as Kenya Table Tennis so that we can get into a discussion and agree how we can be able to work. Because it is not automatic. We have to negotiate, we have to agree. It is my dream that uh, in the program that has been laid out by the president, and working with partners beyond the three of us to others in the 47 counties, we are going to realize this dream and probably ultimately be able to get uh, more players playing table tennis. We are not taking that for granted. We look forward to this partnership and we hope that table tennis will become a household game like football because this is something that, if pursued, can open other avenues in sports for these children. The president has asked about sponsorship, which of course is very crucial. We are, very, we are fully aware that uh, apart from having the students allowed to grow, we need to have uh, the development in terms of coaches. The project will also see 5,000 Madare youth benefit from the scholarship. Modibo, who recently retained a seat as president of the African Federation, promised that Kenya will benefit a lot from the planned projects of developing the sport. Frederick Mwoki for Channel One Sports. Elsewhere, Kenya Airways has partnered with the FIA and WRC Safari Rally Kenya to unveil their selection for the prestigious FIA Rally Star Program. The three young Kenyan drivers selected are Macre, Kimathi, Hamza Anwar and Jeremy Wahome, who will join the global program and compete in the upcoming WRC Safari Rally slated for June 27th sorry, June 24th to the June 27th and will be televised live on KBC Channel 1. The FIA partnership with KQ will include transportation of the team to Europe and beyond for training and profiling of the teams globally through the KQ network and assets across the world. This FIA-funded program organizes competitions to detect the most promising rallying talent. Those identified benefit from world-class training and mentorship, nurturing a new generation of drivers with the ultimate aim of kick-starting their professional career worldwide within the Junior World Rally Championship. To soccer now, fans attending England's Euro 2020 group games at Wembley Stadium will be required to show proof of vaccination or a negative test before entry. UEFA says UK-based ticket holders aged 11 and over can show proof of vaccination with both doses received at least 14 days 
before the match. The games will be played in England, Italy, Germany, Hungary, Azerbaijan, where we took you last week uh, uh, with the Formula One, Russia, Spain, Romania, Netherlands, Scotland, and Denmark. Each of these cities will host three group stage matches and one match in the round of 16, or the quarterfinals, with the exception of St. Petersburg, which will host six group stage matches, and London, which will host two matches in the round of 16. Despite taking place in 2021, the UEFA Euro 2020 uh, tournament will still be known as UEFA Euro 2020. The reason is uh, we need to keep the original vision of the tournament, which was to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the championship and to serve as a reminder of how the whole football family came together to, to respond to the difficult times that Europe and the world had to go through in 2020. Turkey and Italy kickstart Euro 2020 this Friday. Then Wales face Switzerland, Denmark play Finland, and Russia face Belgium in the next matches on Saturday. The final will be played on the 11th of July. We have come to the end of Channel One News Hour this Wednesday evening. Thank you so much for watching. But before I leave, let me appreciate Alf, Alfin Kiri, who are watching from Cap Catet, uh, Marvin Munyonge tuned in from Kitale, Enos Omodi from Homabi County, DZJ033, Oyando Wikely from 45, Boni Waze, watching from Ekware Nyamasibi, Kisi. County. Thank you so much. My name is Ben Troenjoe Anwangeshi has been our sign language interpreter for tonight. Good night and stay safe.